Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Today, we are going to discuss about uh, FOMC interest rate decision. And uh, this is a very important day today because uh, not every day we see a Fed meeting or a meeting where Central Bank of US decides upon the interest rates. In fact, these meetings are so rare that they happen eight to nine times in a year. And uh, whenever they happen, the traders, investors, they experience a lot of volatility. And uh, even your portfolios can be impacted if you're not careful during uh, these interest rate decisions meetings. There are a lot of day traders who take this opportunity to play some trades. Um, we'll also tell you that how to actually understand these meetings. Uh, we'll take you through uh, a little understanding of what has happened in the past. What is Federal Reserve? how these interest rate decisions impact commodities, currencies, indices. Uh, what does it mean when we talk about higher interest rates or lower interest rates, how it could impact different asset classes. And uh, today is a very, very important um, day because uh, this is something which has been um, into the news for long. Uh, and before we proceed, just want to make sure that um, your chat options are enabled. And uh, if you can see me properly, if you can hear, and if you can see my presentation, uh, please use your uh, chat options to write yes, OK. Or if you have any questions, please do ask. Just test your chat options. If you have any questions in the future, you can always definitely write it down. That being said, um, just to remind everyone here, this is uh, one of the sessions which we are doing in the month of September. September is the month where uh, we have done a webinar every day since the month has started, um, Monday to Friday. And uh, except Saturday and Sundays when the markets are closed, every single day of trading has been followed by a webinar on a topic. So today's session is also something very important. It's about the Fed interest rate decision. And as I said, that if you have uh, any questions, if you have any doubts, you can definitely use your chat options to uh, ask me these questions. And I'll be trying to answer you as we are in the session. I'll also take you to the live platform to see the uh, current market prices of a few products and to understand that uh, what is the expectation, how uh, we can... Um, assess the Fed meeting today and what it is going to be about. Before we proceed, uh, we know that the investments in derivatives market um, can lead to a higher risk. There's a lot of discipline required in day trading and other forms of investment. So please make sure that if you um, really like something, if you want to implement in your live accounts, please do ask your risk experts. Please do ask your investment consultants. Be very careful when you're trading. Don't just follow what other people say. Uh, even in my case, I'm here to give you more and more information. And um, it will make a lot of sense if you really uh, would uh, talk to an investment consultant before you place any trades and before you do any kind of investments. Now, let's understand the Federal Reserve and the interest rates. This is something which um, is a very important question. So a lot of people, they look at interest rates, but they don't really... Um, um, understand the idea that why they are looking at interest rate decisions. First things is, of course, they, it really implements, uh, it really affects the every single portfolio or um, every single trade which you have in your portfolio. So that is something which is obviously there. Uh, but when we understand uh, about how the Fed works, what is inflation targeting? Because inflation targeting is something which um, is a very common uh, phenomenon these days amongst uh, central banks. And that is why it's really important because inflation targeting to begin with, it's basically a goal-based approach to monetary policy, which has been set by central bank. And central bank is seeking a sort of annual rate of inflation, which is acceptable to them. 
Beyond that, if the inflation grows higher, then the central bank takes steps to control. So inflation targeting, I mean, this is something which is uh, uh, very important. And uh, there is, as I said, that when I talk about inflation target, this is a part of a monetary policy where the central bank uh, follows a very explicit target for the inflation rate for the medium to long term. And they made sure that that target uh, is maintained. If the inflation goes beyond the target, then normally what we see is uh, increase in interest rates because to control inflation, that is one of the important measures. But again, as I said, uh, inflation, as we speak about, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about what inflation is. And in a very uh, basic understanding of what inflation is, we are talking about inflation. It's a measure of how much the prices of goods. We talk about food or televisions or haircuts or houses or train tickets. How much the prices of goods have moved up or services for that matter. Now, usually people measure inflation by comparing the cost of things today with how much they costed a year ago. So let's say, for example, how would you measure inflation? You would measure inflation by seeing price of something today and you will compare that price with how much it was a year ago or how much it was some time ago. The average increase in the price, that is known as the inflation rate. So whatever is the average increases in the price of a product or a service, the rate at which it increases, it is the inflation rate. So if the inflation is, let's say, 3%, now that means the prices are 3% higher than they were a year ago on an average. So if a loaf of bread costs you, say, one dirham a year ago, and now it is one dirham and three fills, then it has risen by 3%. So this is something which is which should be uh, everybody should be aware of this. Now, how inflation is measured otherwise? The Bureau of Labor in US and in other countries there are different departments which measure the inflation through a index called Consumer Price Index. Okay. Now every month we see there is an office of National Statistics and it kind of collects around a lot of prices of six, seven hundred items. And then they use this basket, which is basically known as the consumer price index. So the index measures the inflation. And that inflation is something what the central banks are trying to target. So central banks, the governments across the world, they have set a target of 2% inflation. I'm explaining you right now what inflation targeting is because this is really important, guys. Today, whatever news is going to come that depends on your understanding what is inflation target and what federal reserve actually is so as i said that the government or the central bank they have set out a inflation target of two two percent so they have they want the inflation to be lower and stable to keep it lower and stable the government sets an inflation target of two percent now this helps everyone plan their future Right, Because if the target is 2% annually, then nobody expects that the prices should go more than 2%. If inflation is too high or if it moves around a lot, it's harder for businesses to set the right price for people. right? And people will find it difficult to plan their spending. If inflation is too low or if it is negative or if we are reaching towards deflation, as we call it, then some people you know, may not even spend because they expect prices to fall. So everybody will just keep their money with them and they will not spend because they're expecting that the prices is anyways going to come down. Why buy now? Now, lower price, they sound like a really good thing. But if everybody reduce their spending, then who's actually going to manufacture at all? How a producer is going to make anything if the prices just continue to fall? People will lose their jobs. So deflation is also not a good thing. So the government sets a target of 2% inflation. Now, if the target is not met, Let's say if the inflation target is 1%, right? Or let's say CPI increased the inflation index more than 3%. So 
a central bank meeting happens where there are steps declared to understand that how to control this inflation every country has a central bank okay now central bank of us is called federal reserve central bank of uh, england central bank of england is called bank of england uh, central bank of india is called reserve bank of india central bank of europe is called european central bank uh, central bank of china is called uh, people's bank of china so as and when we talk about central banks every country has a central bank and uh, we need to understand that these central banks have the job of this inflation targeting where they make they want to make sure that the inflation does not increase 2% now as i said obviously central bank they want to control the rate of inflation to control inflation if inflation is too high then they have to control the supply of the money now when they control the supply of the money it impacts the value of the dollar so dollar might get stronger might get weaker and that is what contributes to the inflation so how the inflation targeting would work central bank has set a target of inflation rate as you can see in the slide usually a number like 2% per year they monitor the actual inflation rate track the prices through cpi the consumer price index whether the inflation is going up or down now if the inflation is going up they will adjust the interest rates based on the actual inflation so if inflation is higher than the target interest rates go up now that basically slows down the economy cools things down uh, basically reduces the supply of money right and at the same time people have less money in their pockets so they spend less they demand less and the prices fall if inflation is lower than the target what happens then they might have to reduce the interest rates they reduce the interest rates people borrow more money because the credit is cheaper which brings price a little bit because spending increases demand increases and that is how the inflation is maintained when i talk about interest rates that if inflation is high interest rates increase if inflation is low interest rates come down why it happens because when inflation is high interest rates means the cost of borrowing or the money at the the rate at which people borrow money from the bank increasing that rate making loans more expensive if loans become more expensive people would have less money in their pockets because people would borrow less if they borrow less they spend less they spend less the demand for the products comes down and inflation the prices of the products starts coming down so the inflation starts coming down that is the idea of inflation targeting and that is the difference what central bank creates right so this is something which needs to be uh, uh, very clear that central bank has a very important role now central bank of us is called federal reserve federal reserve has a very important task in their hand to discuss how to manage interest rates so what a monetary policy looks like so as you can see right now the federal reserve which is central bank of us they have a monetary policy mandate where the federal reserve goals are to maintain the maximum employment stable prices long term interest rates now there is a traditional monetary policy there is a non traditional monetary policy there are two kinds of monetary policies which central bank would come up with if you see the traditional monetary policy as it shows in the slides there are open market operations there are reserve requirements and then the discount window lending now if you read about open market operations we are looking at supply of balances in the federal funds market supply of money credit in the economy talk about reserve requirements influence demand for balances in the federal funds supply of money again credit in the economy and we talk about discount window lending which influences supply of balances again in the federal funds so there are different points right we talk about the non traditional monetary policy we look at forward guidance and large scale asset purchase now let's understand these terms so look at the non traditional policy first 
when we talk about non traditional policy we look at forward guidance which means helping the public better understand the policy makers intentions about the future course of monetary policy and then there is a large scale asset purchase large scale asset purchase providing additional stimulus to the interest or sensitive spending affecting the economy through the same channels as traditional monetary policy so what actually happens when central banks take this decision about uh, increasing the interest rates or reducing the interest rates what is their job especially using a non traditional policy first is they would conduct a press conference they would let people know about what is the expectation of the future course of monetary policy so what will happen is today when we are going to see the central state decision today central bank is going to not only talk about that whether they have reduced the interest rates or not today central bank is also going to talk about what is going to be the future course of interest rates in the next one year will the interest rates will be cut or will the loans become more expensive or will the loans become more cheaper so that is forward guidance second thing is injecting cash in the economy in form of stimulus so what happens a lot of times you will hear that it happened in pandemic and it happened during recession that central bank would inject more cash in the economy and that is again a sort of non traditional policy sometimes it also happens that the reserve requirements which the commercial banks are supposed to keep a certain amount of reserves with the central banks so those reserve requirements are increased or decreased which is a traditional policy right traditional monetary policy so what happens in that case that if the central bank wants to increase the supply of money then they reduce the reserve ratio for the commercial banks they would encourage commercial banks to take this money out and give for lending so the supply of money can increase let's summarize this fact over here that to control inflation the money supply in the economy needs to be reduced which means people should have less money in their pocket so they can spend less they can demand less and the prices come down and that is what controls the inflation to make sure that the money supply is less loans are made more expensive or deposits are made more attractive if the bank gives you a very excellent deposit rate you would keep that money in the bank and not spend outside because you are getting a good deposit rate right so that reduces the supply of money from the economy on the other hand if the inflation is low and you want inflation to slightly go up what you do you make loans more cheaper so people can borrow more money and the supply of money increases also in case of deposits you make deposits more attractive uh, more, less attractive so that people take money out from the bank's deposits and invest somewhere else or invest into businesses or spend or do anything rather than keeping their money in the bank and the supply in the market for money it grows that is how inflation is controlled by the federal reserve going further there's a important element to this now there is one asset class which greatly gets impacted by the prices of uh, by the interest rate rise and fall whenever the interest rates go up and here we are talking about the cost of borrowing the rate at which you borrow money from the bank and central and and commercial bank borrows money from the central bank so the rate at which you borrow money from the bank when that interest rate goes up when loans become more expensive what happens to the bond prices the bond price eventually starts falling why because now the interest rates have started going higher right now typically the value of fixed coupon bonds will start falling when the interest rate rise because now the new bonds which are being issued they are the ones which are more attractive because interest rates have gone up now when you start lending money to the us government you will receive higher interest 
so you want to buy a new bond so what happens the value of existing bonds it starts coming down because the value of current bonds is not that attractive the interest rate which you are getting on the current bonds is not attractive because interest rates now have gone up so the price of bonds they fall similarly when interest rates go down bond prices start moving higher why because imagine if the price of the if the if the interest rates which you were getting on a bond was 5% and it's a fixed interest you will receive this interest for another 10 years because your bond will get matured in another 10 years now in the market interest rates have come down to 4% your bond is giving you 5% so the value of your bond definitely goes up but the prices of new bonds are obviously not going to be very attractive the value of your bond will go higher but the new bonds obviously the prices will be lower because the interest rates are low and a lot of times the investors they start taking money out of the bonds when interest rate starts falling right they want to put it into stocks because now the risk reward is better now you want to risk more in stocks or in other riskier assets right so this is something which we have seen and that is why you have to plan your strategies before a rate increase or a rate cut and that is something which is very important just making sure guys please check if you have any questions please continue to ask if you have any questions and we'll definitely try to answer this while we are in the session perfect now moving on to the next part here impact on your investments what is mostly the impact on your investments and there are different asset classes of course um there are bonds there are real estate there are currencies equities bonds the impact on bonds i just told you on fixed income products that when interest rate goes down how the bond prices get affected when interest rates go up how bond prices get impacted When interest rates go up bond prices fall when interest rates go down the bond prices they start increasing so this is something which we have seen that the value the price of your bond will increase if the interest rates cut but those bonds which are fixed coupon bonds which are giving you a fixed interest so when markets when the interest rates were 5% and you could lend money and earn 5% interest imagine the value of that bond would expire in 20 years until 20 years you will get 5% because it's a fixed interest bond now if the rate comes down the new bonds issued will be at a lower interest rate but your bond is still giving you a fixed interest so the value of that bond goes up that is the impact that's why um i can share with you a very popular strategy which we talked about which was on fixed coupon bonds so fixed coupon notes or fixed coupon bonds in a falling environment right when the rate cuts are expected how would you basically expect the bond markets to follow so right here as we speak i can also share my slide and show you a fixed coupon play which we came up with right fixed coupon bonds between rate cut expectations now rate cut is today but i think this was something which was issued in the month of august to aware the clients that you know there are some opportunities which which you can look into now if you see this was the macro scenario which we talked about right in july fomc fed kept the rates steady see this is to just give you a, a scenario uh, back then what happened in the july meeting the fed kept kept the interest rate steady between 5.2 to 5.5 and it was this was expected but post that meeting when the press conference happened again it was highlighted that inflation is somewhat elevated job gains the number of people who are employed and the job gains have moderated there was a room for a rate cut in september right so and this is which was done which was talked about in july and september rate cut announcement is today inflation improved very well right obviously between 2022 to 2024 from 9% it went down to 3% fed target is 2% as we discussed that most of the central banks have a target of 
now obviously uh, here there is a room for a rate cut because if unemployment we saw the unemployment rate rose slightly from 4.3 to 4.3 percent it did come down to 4.2 percent also but what was the idea there was a lot of talks about the analyst of making loans cheaper in the month of september and if you are holding a fixed coupon bond now this is where it became interesting if rate cuts are expected fixed coupon bonds they have the advantage because the name suggests fixed coupon bonds or fixed interest bonds as the interest rates decrease the existing fixed coupon bonds becomes more attractive their market price goes up and the price appreciation benefit investors so there's a capital gain then there's a stable income because you are getting fixed interest payments if there was a bond which was a variable rate bond or a newly issued bond they will offer you lower returns because the interest rates are coming down so fixed coupon bonds offer better returns price stability during the rate cuts right now again there are fixed rate bond funds also right and then as how they would perform during the us interest rates this was one etf which was spib which tracks the us investment grades fixed rate corporate bonds they are government bonds there are corporate bonds and if you see that particular etf went about 9.7% up and given the rate cut expectations maybe again good corporate bonds they might even go higher compared to the floating rate bonds so these were some fixed coupon bonds and in that again there are a lot of corporate bonds as well like goldman sachs bank of america these are investment grade bonds which give you a decent yield to maturity around 6.4% 6.5% coupons around 6.38 dollars so this was one and this was one play which we did for the fixed coupon bonds because every event has some sort of strategy now how your investments get impacted if you are invested into commodities higher rates or expensive loans they attract investors towards fixed income instruments taking money out of risky assets so if interest rates remain higher again the bond investments are more favorable right because you are getting more interest and it's fixed income so risk reward why somebody would put money into risky commodities when you can get a higher interest rate by giving loan to the us government so more inclination towards fixed income so no normally if the rates cut which is the expectation today lower rates reduces carry cost of commodities right attract investors to buy forces investors to seek out higher returns because now bonds are not interesting at all because interest rates are down so it will force investors to seek higher returns in some riskier assets like gold or crude oil or other commodities so that's why in a lower interest rate era commodity prices tend to go higher than bonds and bond prices normally bonds are not favored during a lower interest rate era when it comes to real estate higher rates again increased mortgage rates make home loans more expensive so it reduces the demand decreases the property value lower rates again are more favorable and uh, it would influence people to buy more properties and a lower interest rate obviously will be a good idea to get into mortgage when it comes to currencies higher interest rates make dollar more expensive and lower interest rates make dollar more weaker because supply of money increases during the when the rates are cut so loans are made cheaper supply of money increases that reduces the value of dollar and as compared to dollar other currencies like euro and pound they appreciate when it comes to stocks obviously higher rates can lead to lower stock prices because every business has loan and nobody wants to pay a higher interest rate so a lower interest rate uh, era or a lower interest rate regime is very positive for the stock investors and for equities together so this is normally the impact on investment and now let me tell you what is happening looking at the inflation target fed target is 2% you can see that how close the inflation is to the fed target that red line is a 2% target and that blue line is where the inflation is and see from where it came down from 9% down all the way to 3% and less so it's very close to the fed target and that is why a rate cut is anticipated now this is something which we wanted to talk about today i discussed a play on fixed coupon notes that how 
uh, this is something which one should do because if there are more rate cuts expected then it is only wise to uh, invest more into fixed coupon bonds fixed coupon bonds not variable coupons because the value of fixed coupon bonds can actually increase further if more rate cuts come across because currently the interest rates range from 5.2 to 5.5 percent right now central bank here so this is going to be the fed's biggest interest rate call in the years to happen it's going to be today and uh, what to be expected because for all the hype that goes into these fed meetings they are pretty much predictable affairs right a lot of times policy makers they have already put their intentions ahead of the time markets have already reacted to it and people have at least a general idea of what is going to happen normally this is how it works this time it's actually very different because this week's gathering what we are looking at the central banks the fomc committee there is a lot of mystery coming in because markets have made up their mind that fed is going to lower interest rates that is expected there has been a debate of how much lower it can go now that is where it becomes interesting fed has hinted or they had hinted that the markets uh, that the interest rates would fall by 25 basis points right a traditional call which fed mostly does 0.25% decline now is it going to be that traditional quarter pointer or will fed take an aggressive first step and reduce the rates by 0.5% or half a point that is something which is interesting here and that's what you need to see today guys do not make this mistake today is going to be a very important interest rate decision and you will see prices of gold prices of stock indices currencies moving a lot during this time fed watchers are really unsure and they are trying to set up the potential for an fomc meeting right and again this meeting now wraps up today or like it has already done today afternoon and now the press conference is going to happen in the later night and we'll see not in the later night by the way by the end of the evening now there could be a cut of 50 basis points right we might see a cut of 50 basis points or we might uh, see a cut of 25 basis points it depends and this is what we have to observe because there are a lot of traders a lot of them have expected a 25 basis point cut all of a sudden we see that sentiment has sort of shifted now a lot of traders are expecting a 50 basis point rate cut also so this is where it becomes very interesting guys that's why this is going to be a biggest interest rate call in year happens what happens when rate cuts are more than anticipated if instead of 50 basis points if instead of 25 basis points if the rate cut happens by 50 basis points or 0.5 percent that could show that loans are getting more cheaper that could push stocks higher that could push gold prices higher that could make dollar come down and that could bring euro pound and other currencies as compared to dollars go higher or more positive right so that's why you need to make your buying and selling calls as per the today's decision and you have to be very careful of how it's going to look like now again another question comes is there a big difference between a quarter point versus a half point cut what does it mean does it mean that is there going to be a big difference between a fed cut rates by 0.5 percent or 0.25 percent i know what you're thinking you're thinking how much is the difference it cuts by 0.25 percent or 0.5 it's a very big difference because that shows that what is going to be the future path of fed if they are cutting rates by 0.5 percent now that means that there is some sort of positivity right or the fed perceive that there could be uh, a hint of a recession that's why they want to cut rates so there is, there is a lot of ifs and buts obviously what is expected i mean there are a lot of expectations what is going to happen right 
if there is a big difference between if fed cuts the rates by 25 basis points if they cut by 50 basis points what are the different scenarios which will come again different scenarios are also very important right if there is an opportunity for the traders to look at and why not because what happens people who have followed previous announcements in central bank decisions they know that how much it matters if the fed cut rates by half a percent instead of 0.25 percent a lot of times fed has preferred to make interest rate moves by 25 basis points only 0.25 percent now there is obviously as per the recent data we have observed that there is an imminent threat to the economy right now if the price rises too quickly or is the labor market cooling too much or are the central bank opting for larger interest rate moves a week ago traders were completely convinced that the rate cut would not be more than 0.25 percent now majority of them are leaning towards a cut of 0.5 percent right if the central bank does not produce what majority of people are expecting now that might disappoint stock markets we might see a major sell-off this is the ironic thing about this most of the americans how much is the difference between a quarter point versus a half point you feel pretty insignificant right but it could take years before the full effects of an interest rate cut are felt and that is the reason so even though the interest rate you pay when you borrow money it will go down with over time when the rate cuts it does not necessarily drop the very second when the fed cuts the rates so please understand this the moment central bank cut interest rates it does not mean that tomorrow onwards your loan is going to be cheaper right this is something which you have to understand it's going to be uh, very important and it this is something which is very interesting that as and when the central bank cut happens it does not mean that tomorrow your loan is going to be expensive you might see it happening over a period of time so if it is a 25 basis point or a 50 basis point cut it is going to take some time before the cut is implemented in the market that's why a higher cut is going to be boosting up for the stock markets but a lower cut a cut of 25 basis points it might create a sell off so even a rate cut happens if it does not happens as per the market expectations we might see a sell off happening in the stocks today so be very careful guys if there is a 25 basis point rate cut we might see stocks coming down a bit because the expectation is 50 basis point but then there is going to be a press conference also where the Fed chairperson is going to discuss about the future course of interest rates. If there is something positive there, you might see a turnaround in the markets overall. But if not, then we might see stocks coming down as well. Now, for those traders, how to basically trade the Fed interest rate decision? Because I'm sure the main question you have that, okay, enough about this. How do we trade this? Now, how to trade the interest rate decision? Obviously, there are few instruments which will get impacted. The announcement is expected to be the most relevant of the year. Now, does it provide opportunities for the traders? It definitely does. Because the interest rate affect all companies, all households. Interest rates, if interest rates normally go up, then it costs the stock markets to come down. If it goes down, it boosts the stock market. But at the same time, again, when the interest rates go up, the dollar becomes more stronger. But if interest rates come down, dollar becomes weaker. Market players usually anticipate this decision and then it already gets priced, right? So for example, if you see dollar yen, if you see euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar has shown signs of weakening in last two or three weeks because this decision was already priced in. If you see the dollar index also, there is a something called dollar index. Dollar index, it gauges the value of US dollar against a basket of major currencies, right? And dollar index, if you see in last few days, it has fallen down, especially ahead of Fed meeting. It falls down. Why? Because markets are expecting interest rate cuts. So volatility within this kind of event 
is usually linked to the deviation between what market has expected and what the actual decision is. Now, this is really important. The markets have already priced in a 25 basis point cut. So if the cut is by 25 basis points, don't expect a positive movement. Like if don't expect stock markets to go higher if there is a 25 basis point rate cut because markets have already rallied in last one week. So that thing is already priced in. But if there is a 50 basis point cut, now that's aggressive. That means uh, there's a possibility the dollar might get a little more weaker. Stocks might get a little more higher. Gold prices might shoot up, cross might cross 2600, right? So this is something, this is a very relevant factor. In fact, if the Fed delivers a rate cut as expected, it is the one that can actually trigger a very volatile reaction. If, if 50 basis point rate cut comes across, it might trigger a very volatile reaction in a lot of currencies, especially in dollar and euro and pound, especially in gold and stocks. So this is something which is, again, that is one, but you must also uh, anticipate the press conference. Uh, there is a lot of speculation. Obviously, the reaction on dollar will depend on Fed's ability, how much they can surprise the investors. Interest rates will trigger the initial reaction, but the press conference is, is the cream. That's where you should be focused on. And uh, if the rates are not changed, which, by the way, is not a scenario, but let's put all the cards on the table. If there is no change in the interest rates, then we might see a major sell-off in the equity markets. We might see gold prices dropping in. We might see dollar getting more stronger. But that is only if the interest rate remains unchanged. Uh, expected cut is 25 basis points. That might keep markets flat or lower. A rate cut 50 basis points or larger could put dollar on a bearish mode, could increase the stock prices could bring gold prices even more, might cross 2600 also. That is what the opportunity is like at the moment. So when you are doing trading in these markets, please be careful. You must uh, look for the press conference also. Let me share the live platform with you. Let me show you the current market, where is that and what um, we, we are looking at. So let's say right now, we are looking at the current market. This is the live platform right here. And we see. So just to see currently. Euro dollar, it's at 1.11. Uh, today, it's if you see, look at the movement. Gold has pretty much remained flat 2570. Brent oil has done, gone down by 0.8%. But if you see Hong Kong index is up by 1.3%. US indices have moved very moderate down by 0.1%. Obviously, markets are waiting for the Fed meeting to happen. Now, using our platform, you can click on economic calendar. And economic calendar will show you that how to assess uh, what is going to be the interest rate decision today. And... So much. what is going to be the interest rate decision today and when we are looking at that interest rate decision how do we check so using a markets calendar you can do it today is 18th of september so you select 18th uh, click on the highest important news and the highest priority is fed in interest rate decision as you can see that 5.5 percent was the act previous 5% is what is expected. Now, if it comes 5.25, which means 25 basis point rate cut. Now, this will happen at 10 o'clock UAE time. And at 10.30, 30 minutes after the interest rate decision, a press conference would happen. Now, if a press conference happens, press conference will decide. That's where the chairman, Jerome Powell, would talk about the future path of interest rates. That also, friends, that also is a very important press conference. A lot of times, majority of the market movement happens after the press conference ends or during the press conference. So this is something which you see. Now, I'm just going to also going to show you that how much uh, the 
instruments have moved back in the past so if i go to the volatility as you can see one hour after the event euro has moved around 47 pips but if you see five minutes after the event easily 25 to 30 pips currencies have moved right different kinds of currencies if you see the historical impact so this is again a very average movement if you see prices of gold and others they can move a lot more a lot more uh, not just by 20 or 30 dollars but if the fed surprises we might see a 50 60 dollars rally or downside in gold prices so you need to be very careful right now as you see the markets are very flat nobody is executing trades they are everybody is waiting for the fed meeting to happen it's going to be happening at 10 p.m today so be uh, careful uh, how you can see this you can see this on the economic calendar which we have or otherwise online you can always assess you can always see the news and most importantly you'll be able to see a lot of movement happening that would tell that you know the decision is out at 10 p.m and at 10 30 p.m do not miss out on the press conference that is also something which is very important right so there's a question here that does this rate cut affects other markets also like india if yes why uh, and it will affect because rate cuts are happening in us only so does these rate cuts impact indian markets that is the question see indian markets not very much but uh, because the indian markets have their own following we have seen the rates in india are different so it does impact dollar and INR at best. Sometimes all the markets, they follow the US market also. So if US markets end positive, uh, European, and sometimes Indian markets end positive, is there a direct relationship between a rate cut in US versus in India? Dollar INR would move because dollar would move up and down. So that would definitely inf influence the price of dollar and INR, but not nifty directly. Because there are a lot of events happening in India itself, which could decide the course of uh, stock markets in India. But you will see US market uh, and European market and UK market closely following each other. So you can track German index and US index and see that most of the time if this index goes up, you will see other markets like Europe and UK also following. At some extent, India might follow, but then India's economy is pretty big too. Uh, the sort of events, so it's Europe and then it's Asia and then it's US. So it's slightly different. It does not have a very big impact. But then we are talking about the bigger surprise also. It depends on how big the surprise. If it's really revolutionary, then it might just push the stock markets higher across the world. Right? So that being said, again, uh, this is going to be a very important interest rate decision. And uh, as we said that if the interest rate cut happens 50 basis points, please focus especially a lot on NASDAQ because more rate cuts will push tech stocks higher first as compared to other stocks. So do look out for that. This is something which is really important. I don't think how many people know this, but um, it definitely uh, pushes the tech stocks higher if the rate cuts happen more than anticipated right so this is going to be a very very big week today as i have said stocks have shown a very mixed reaction uh for all the stocks whether you talk about u.s market in u.s market if you talk about dow jones or snp reaction has been very mixed investors are still very divided whether the fed will announce a 0.25 percent rate cut or a 50 basis points Central bank generally uh, telegraph its next move before the policy meetings. But then again, since last week, as we have said, that the trader's mind is pretty much made up. And we have seen that there is a lot of movement happening uh, across. So let's try to make the best out of this, guys. Let's try to uh, make sure that uh, we be careful during these interest rate decisions. And uh, also, to all of you, I would suggest 10 p.m. is going to be the interest rate decision. Before that, 
do not place any trades even if you put stop losses it might get hit really fast because extreme volatility is anticipated so wait before the interest rate decisions and then wait uh before uh, the press conference once the press conference clears out that would be a good idea to then enter into the market right and this rate cut might have a long term impact if there is a surprise introduced by fed in terms of higher rate cuts that is going to be setting the path of a lot of portfolios uh, until the next year so with that thank you so much for joining today guys i think uh, this was uh, one session which we really needed to do today uh, i think it's already 8 o'clock and in the next 2 hours the decision comes in so i wish all of you a good luck those traders and investors who are eyeing up for this decision it's going to be a big night could be a long night so continue to track the prices continue to be uh, uh, trade carefully definitely if and when you trade please do put the stop losses make sure that your accounts are well funded if you are taking high leverage please make sure that you have enough margin in your accounts and uh, it's going to be a historic day today and i hope uh, that each one of you follows this and sees this if you liked our session uh, please go on google reviews century financial and let us know how we did and it really motivates us to do more and more sessions and it helps us to continue um, keeping you aware about uh, what's happening in the market uh, we'll meet you tomorrow again 7 to 8 same time on a different topic and as and when days are progressing we are finding out new topics to deal with we are bringing out the best of the best and as much as we can make you um, aware about what's going on so this was a commentary on the fed decision uh, we'll make sure that uh, uh, we continue to share with you latest insights follow century financial on our youtube and on instagram as well and we'll make sure to bring out uh, more and more important information my name is yogesh i'll see you tomorrow same time on a different topic till then trade safe uh, take care uh, and make sure that uh, your positions are covered and you have put your stop losses you have a great night i'll see you tomorrow